Good Friday. Welcome and thank you for giving us your time today uh, for our DM Connect webinar, our ongoing monthly series of peer-to-peer -peer led sessions. And if you can go to the uh, laptop slide, there you go. Thank you. Just as a reminder for the full list of D 2023 DM Connect webinars, simply visit dentalmonitoring.com slash events. All previous presentations are available on demand and you are able to register for the one remaining event in December. I'll share more information pertaining to that session at the conclusion of today's presentation. My name is Sean Pemberton. I'm the Global Professional Training and Education Manager for Dental Monitoring, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. Our presenter today is making his DM Connect webinar debut though he is no stranger to the stage. Dr. Mike Reagan is a native of Dallas, Texas, married his high school sweetheart, Cindy, who, God bless her, is now a preschool teacher. And Dr. Reagan attended Baylor University as an undergrad and continued on at the Baylor College of Dentistry before completing his orthodontic residency at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He returned home has been making smiles healthy and beautiful for over 25 years with two locations in the North Dallas suburbs. And please note that all participant lines have been muted, but if you have a question or would like to submit one, please feel free to enter at any time, uh, enter that question in the chat provided, and we will address as many questions as we can, either during or at the conclusion of the presentation. The session will be recorded in its entirety in an on-demand version will be available using the same link you received following registration. And prior to the release of what we refer to as DM 2.0 in July of 2021, dental monitoring was primarily utilized by orthodontists to optimize aligner treatments. And what Dr. Reagan and others discovered was the power of one of the key enhancements built into DM 2.0 that allowed total optimization of braces treatments as well. That key enhancement is dental monitoring treatment goals. But what are treatment goals? How do they work? And more importantly, how can the application of these goals help to not only optimize braces treatments, but to serve as the domino to enable the next phase of the workflow optimization, which is dynamic scheduling? These are all questions that Dr. Reagan will address within the next hour. So with that, it's my pleasure to now welcome and turn the presentation over to Dr. Mike Reagan. Thanks, Sean. I, I kind of picture Sean overall after the uh, summit and now he's like, he's the voice of DM. I, I feel like that's that's his big role there. So uh, first of all, I always like to start these by giving out my cell and email number and my, my cell number and email. So if anybody wants to take note of that, the best way to get a hold of me is text me. Even if you're sending me a case via email, text is the best way. I try not to check it during the day. Um, and as Sean pointed out to do Q&A, on that bottom section, you can see raise your hand. I'm going to ask you guys to raise your hand at this. I always like to start these things just really quickly, just as a get to know you. I know there's a few people on this webinar who know me. Um, so uh, luckily, you can't speak out, but maybe you'll just raise your hand as well because I'm gonna start with two truths and a lie. And so two of these are true about me and one of these is a lie. So I played, uh, I was drafted to play professional baseball by the Cubs. I was the leading scorer, scorer in Texas in lacrosse as a senior, or I could in the past dunk a basketball. So let's start with raising your hands if you think that the first one drafted is the lie. And John, I can't see if they're raising hands, so they may not be. And that's okay if you're not. Um, number two, if you think number two is correct, uh, or not correct, sorry, the lie, the lacrosse, raise your hand. And the third one in the past could dunk a basketball. If you think that's a lie, raise your hand. Dr. Reagan. Well, so most everyone said that you cannot dunk a basketball. Oh, thank you. That's super helpful. Absolutely. Just sharing the screen because I can't see. All right. So 
let's go through these. And that is, well, I was drafted out of high school to play professional baseball. Uh, my dad had played and said, there's no way you're going because I was drafted in the 82nd round, which there are not that many rounds anymore. Uh, and so I went to play college baseball and I ended up finishing my career at Baylor starting at Mizzou. And then the other is I could dunk a basketball because my best friend, six foot nine, played in the NBA and said, you will never be able to dunk. So I put these on and made my calves feel like they're about to explode. But I increased my 40 time or decreased my 40 time and increased my vertical enough <laughs> that the ball was placed right over the goal. I could dunk it. So I know that seems weird, especially since I'm five foot eight. But uh, that's that's so the, the lie is lacrosse. There was no such thing in the state of Texas at the time. And so I have to put this up for my world champion, Texas Rangers, as a kid growing up in Texas and playing ball. Uh, man, these last couple of days have been outstanding. So much fun to watch and be a part of. Uh, I was there for Friday night's game with the 11th inning walk-off home run. And, man, it was just – it was unbelievable. Okay, so my bio, I'm past president of Southwestern Society. They've lured me back in to be a delegate again this year. I'm looking forward to doing that after taking a hiatus for a while. I was the chair of COC um, that did all the advertising early on. Um, I currently am the head of orthodontics for MCNA in eight states, which is a Medicaid uh, administering company. And all I do is review cases, speak with the state, and deal with appeals and state hearings, so forth. But my number one role is my is husband and family. You know, you heard that my daughter, uh, my wife, is a teacher, and so. You know, my life is these guys. And, and so um, Cindy in the center and I, we met when she was 15. I was 18. Um, and then our two girls. And we love to go to travel all over the world. And New York is our favorite to go over Thanksgiving. So this is Rockefeller Center right after the tree went up um, the week of Thanksgiving. So he said, as, as Sean had said, I was a Baylor grad and I was lucky enough to have my oldest follow me there. Um, and she was there uh, during COVID, of course, but they won the national championship in, in basketball, which is a lot of fun to follow with her. And then this is where the lacrosse connection comes. It's actually my youngest. This is Caroline, and she plays field hockey and lacrosse for Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania. So my education at Baylor College of Dentistry, which is now Texas A&M College of Dentistry, and then Nova Southeastern in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, for my um, – for my uh, graduate education in orthodontics. And then for those of you guys who have never met Dr. Carrier, because um, I'm going to speak about the motion, I know that some of you are wanting to hear about that and how we're tracking it. Um, he's great to listen to. That is actually my headgear uh, from high school, uh, from grade school, and uh, I adapted it to, to that. So special thanks to my buddy Scott Runnels in Destin, Florida. Um, he's the first person that I had heard that went all in with DM. And he went all in with DM and doing a lots of aligners. Uh, Jason and Miko Jennings, I'm not sure if, if they're on the call or not. Um, but uh, Jason is a, is a friend and, and was my original rep. He serves a different role in DM now. And his wife, Miko, has become my DM coordinator and couldn't do without her. Uh, my staff for putting up with me when I went all in because I didn't know what I was doing. And hopefully I can help you guys understand what you're doing go on, going all in. Holly Wilson for being the best trainer out there. My gosh, she's helped us so many times with protocols, goals, everything you can think of, and take advantage of your trainer in your area if it's not Holly to do it, what you need to do. And then the DM Summit, this is what got me here. And Celine was the one who invited me, the, the head of DM Marketing. And, and then when I got there and heard, the, of course, the best uh, MC of all time with uh, Sean and all the speakers, Man, I was pumped up and then listening to the other participants standing around me, I said, you know, it's right. It's time to go all in. So role of DM in my practice, and, and this is, and I'm not sure if some of you guys are still going through this. I am definitely. And that's staffing. I was, I was going through a time where I couldn't, I couldn't hire enough staff. And I kept saying, I'm going to wait to start this until I have the right staff numbers. And that's not right. It actually, you don't need that. It actually helps to decrease um, I'm, I'm one less than I thought I need to be currently um, in my staffing. Dynamic scheduling. This was something that I, I know it's one of those things that uh, it's kind of scary to think about to not schedule a patient as they walk out. But um, we're actually using cellular 
level biology to to know when the patient should come in versus the norms that have been put out there for us by textbooks and, and research because um, everybody's different. Stress, I can tell you this, this has decreased my stress so significantly in my practice. And, and part of the problem was you guys all know it who own your own practice. It's, it's hard because you, you're not only seeing patients, you're do, trying to get business done and write checks and the schedule for your life. And, and now with my daughter being in Pennsylvania and traveling up there a lot, I can take my laptop and I can do whatever I need to from wherever I am. And then I'm a very high tech office. I've had a CBCT for a while. I've been 3D printing. Um, I have uh, 11 3D printers and do lots in my office with technology. And this just took the technology to that next level for me. And so the DM Summit is where I started. And, and so for the future, highly recommend this for users, non-users. Um, it's, it's got everything you'd want to um, really help you uh, integrate this into your business and your practice. So benefits. We already talked about the staffing issues, but it also helps you to be a better tracker of treatment. I mean, these are, we, we tell the parents and patients, this is weekly house calls. I'm not waiting for a certain amount of time to see you guys. Better communication with patients because of the chat feature. And also it's a permanent record. So we always have it in there about how we talk to them. And then um, we're catching issues before they become a big problem with something loose or broken or hygiene issues decreases those emergency calls on the nights and weekends because we tell them we find it we tell them to come in during the week and the dynamic scheduling which we talked about fewer visits overall more purposeful visits as you go through this it opens your schedule and that using patient biology has really come into play for us so let's get into goals and talk about it and and so goals as you see it on the patient chart are listed on that left hand side of the screen and so these goals shown here on the main patient screen on that bottom left-hand side. And each of them has a different role in, in what we use in our office. So I'm going to go through this uh, during this presentation. Um, but once you click on one of these goals, it pulls up and then you trigger the interval in which you want to monitor the patient. So the first number is the trigger for when you want to start instructions to be delivered. And the last is the goal or the, the expected goal time that you're expecting for that patient to meet that goal. And so when you're looking at this, it's really easy to look at from a color coding perspective because gray tells you that it's not being tracked. As you see at the bottom of the screen down here, um, the bottom shows those that are not being tracked. The blue is showing those that are tracked but have not met their goal and it says tracked since. So you can know if you look at this, it'll tell you how long it's being tracked did you forget to reset your goals at the previous visit? All of those things. I'm sorry, hit the butt button, didn't mean to. Green means they have achieved their goal and it tells you the date in which they have achieved their goal. And then red are the ones that are overdue. It still tells you the track since, but it also tells you how far they're overdue with the goal that you have set. And so there's different ways to track goals. And I think this is, I've, I've gone through it and, and put together what I thought were the three ways and how I was doing it. Uh, in the past. So at the very beginning, way before I went to the seminar, I had tried DM and, and without goals, you were having to check it, track it yourself uh, or your DM would have to track it. Um, and it was a lot of work. Um, if you, and that's over here to the far right. On, your, on the far left, you can see that you could set goals for each interval that you want it to be looked at in, um, uh, for each patient, for each procedure. And then there's uh, the last way, which I think ultimately is what I came down to because I eliminated these two is that you set the goals closer to your true expectation and um, and set the tasks to go along with it. And what I mean by that is whatever you currently do in your office, we don't expect you to change that you do it the same. And I'm going to go over that here in just a second. So there's a bit of a hierarchy when you look at things and most of you guys are used to probably using plans and protocols, but you may not be used to using the goals part of it, which is the next part. And so Goals are what you set and notifications are how you track it. And so with goals, I think there's two main things that go under goals that are very important. It's not just the goal itself. It's the team instructions that go along with it. And it's the communication to patients and parents. And so the first thing under team instructions is the goal interval. And I'm going to discuss that in the next slide a little bit more in depth. And then review the intervals. How often do you want somebody in your office looking at it or your DM coordinator looking at it or yourself looking at it? 
and then setting up the next visit time. And we'll talk about that as we go through some of the cases. When it comes to communications, you have the chat feature and then you have the quick responses. And with the quick responses, there's a couple of ways that can go about doing that, which again, we're gonna discuss in some future slides. So who makes the selection of the goals in your office? Well, that starts with the protocols and the treatment plan. That's gonna be your staff member who at the start visit sets the protocol, sets the treatment plan, and then your DM coordinator will make sure as they look at it that it's the right one. And then when it comes to goals, you'll have your clinical staff will set that at each visit, not just the start visit, but each visit that they're seeing in the office, you will want to reset those goals to match what you're looking to do. And then DM can change it if the doctor input says, hey, I wanna to change to follow this goal or that goal. And then team instructions and chats, they're used by every member of the team. And if they're not, I would highly encourage you to, and I'm gonna show you some of that as we go through this as well. So when we talk about goals and setting your interval for the goal, you know, the bottom number of that selection, I say, do the same you would have done if you were scheduling them back for that individual thing. So with my initial r we used to see them at eight to 10 week intervals. So we set that lower goal at eight weeks. If we're doing the regular visits with copper nighttime wires, six week intervals, repo visits every four weeks, and then RPE in motion, we would set them every three months to see that. Because that's our goal to be done with those arch wires, with that RPE with full-time turning and with motion with full-time elastic wear. So what should you do? Do exactly the same. Whatever your normal interval would be, expecting to see that change to have happened, I suggest that you do the same with setting that number on your goals. And if you had a range, a six to eight week range, I say set it to the shorter time and then know and tell your DM coordinator or yourself, whoever's monitoring this to say, okay, it's a six to eight week range. It hasn't been in six weeks. Let's give it an extra couple of weeks and see where we go. So goal selection, um, my suggestion is you pick the fewest number of goals that accurately predict the movement you're shooting to do. And the reason is if you select too many goals, there's a chance of me, uh, the, if you do not select the goals with, with the least amount of chance, then it could be too much or irrelevant to the case. And it's fine if you do that. The problem that comes down to it is every goal that you set is gonna send some sort of notification to your, you or your DM coordinator. So it's much better that you set the ones that are specific to that case because fewer of those message and less for your staff to have to keep up with at each visit as they change those goals. So we talked about notifications and this is what notifications look like. So on the right hand side of your screen, that's the notifications tab, which shows you the individual person's name, the date and the notification. But in your main patient screen, which you see on the left, it actually shows you the goals or notifications to review at the very top. So remember your goals are set to follow. The notifications tell you when something is off or needs to be reviewed. So let's get into uh, the treatment approach with this. So this is the first patient, and I know it says braces on the original webinar, but I thought it would be best to talk about things that we do on a regular that made a lot of difference in my office. And the first is phase one treatment. If Bruce, I hear you might be on this call. He loves this stuff just like I do. Phase one treatment is one of my favorites. So RPE in phase one, and this RPE also relates to full treatment cases. But so you got to know this too. I'm not going to show you the completed cases on these. I mean, that's not relevant to what we're talking about anyway, but um, I also went all in with DM in uh, March after that summit. I had dabbled with it, but the all in is what you really should do. And so these cases I'm just showing you are progresses and then we'll go over some interesting notes from them. So this young lady has a bilateral posterior crossbite, mostly on the left side, a spacing issue, as you can see. And so we started to select the goals. So we're gonna put an RPE in to start. So I selected the goal for cross bite left on this young lady because the cross bite was only on the left with the functional shift. And then, then after, the, after the RPE, we'll be going to the two by four treatment. And so in that case, we're gonna select the passive arch wires on the upper and space closure because she does have a little extra space. So scheduling in the past would have been this. I would have had them do one turn every other day for a month, come in and see me, let's check it. And then same thing multiple times until we saw that the expansion was done. So in doing that, if I'm going to see them for three to four months or expect it three to four months of turning at every other day, 
then I would have used three visits. Now, what we do is we do one turn every other day the same way. The DM coordinator has set through, through staff tasks to see the patient every two weeks for a quick check. And then we use quick responses to respond to them. And then the, the next visit that we would set up for them is the bonding visit. So we saw them once to deliver, and the next visit is the bonding visit. So this is that case. You can see the crossbite on the left side. And so in this case, you can see we've select crossbite, correction of crossbite on the left. I set a two-week interval not to respond to them. And then at the 12-week interval, which again, that's our three months, expecting that we should be done with turning around three months, that's where I set my goal. So some DM pro tips. This is like your pearls as we go through this. Um, setting that interval for your DM coordinator, that's different for every office. And so you guys are going to have to go through this. And I'll mention in each of mine what I do. And like in this case, you see with RPE, we do a two-week interval to look at this. So I'm not just looking at the turn, at the, the crossbite. We're also looking at other factors, which I'm about to discuss. The other pro tip here is that don't schedule them for that next visit. And that's hard sometimes for people to think about to do. But again, we talked about the one week house calls, which we're doing. You're seeing this patient, or if your DM coordinator is seeing them every two weeks, you're actually seeing them more frequently than you would have in your own office. So there's no need to schedule on that quickly. So here is why I have my DM coordinator looking at this every two weeks. And that's because, and this is another tip here, is how many have we seen they come in for their four week visit and there's been zero turning going on with the expander. And that's either from the expander turning itself backwards on its own or a parent that's just not getting it done properly. This way we see it quicker. We head it off at the pass. We have a video that's in our YouTube um, channel right now for the future. We hopefully will have these built in that we can share them in DM. And you just send them a video reminding them how to turn and in that way, you keep things on track without having to bring them back a month later and nothing's happening. We will catch this way before it's a problem. The second thing is this. So here's one of the issues you see a lot, at least I do with my, my expanders, especially when I used to extend it to my canines. And that's that when you look at it blown up, you'll see, and you see the observation under warning just below the photo, that there's a mucosal irregularity because of embedment of the embedding of the appliance. Well, right now, that embedded appliance is a minor problem. The tissue is still pink. It's not red and angry. But if you leave it long enough, it will become one. So in this case, we brought them in, five-minute visit, a little adjustment with a bird beak, and now it's not a problem. So we have quick responses. Again, we talked about goals and using the chat or quick responses. This is the first one. We've developed these quick responses that are easily posted to each other, to each patient's chat and sent to the patient and the parent. And so you see the first one, it says, we've noticed this is a problem, please call the office, but we're not just leaving it there. We're actually having a note that's sent internally to our front desk and they call to schedule them as well. The other is the slow progress. So say that we see that there's a turning problem. We ask them a quick question, you know, how's it going? Is there anything we can help with? Because many times the parent will then text back, yeah, I can't seem to find the hole. It's in different places each time. And that way we can head it off with a little chat from the DM coordinator. So what we see most of the time is this. So we can see the progression from the top photo. It's crossing. The crossbite has not completely crossed over, but they're doing a good job. I think it's really important to send these real quick notes like you see here. And each of these notes just lets them know that things are going the way that they should. And so then we transition into our bracket stage. And so we set our passive arch wire, in this case, just for the upper. And then if you look, it says 11 weeks overdue. And that's because of this. And this is the pro tip. So in these cases, I like the way that the arch wire is looking, but you can see the eruption of the teeth. In the past, we bring them in. You can't do anything. All you're doing is changing colors. It's burning a visit. Now we don't do that. We sit here and my DM coordinator will monitor when these teeth are in enough send me a little note and says, should we bring them in or not? And if the answer is yes, then she she touches base at the front desk and gets them scheduled. And maybe your DM coordinator is in your office and can immediately call them and schedule. So these are ways that we're keeping up and not having to bring them in, even though we're waiting for this eruption to happen. And then the last little pro tip, 
because it doesn't really fit anywhere in this presentation. But if you're doing a lot of phase ones, you may be waiting. And so the goal for loss of deciduous teeth, which you can see at the very bottom left um, of the screen, that's a great way to, to track loss of deciduous teeth waiting to start your treatment. So 10 months total treatment time, three total visits because we cemented the RPE, we banded or direct bonded the two by four, and we've done one arch change. And now we're just waiting for the next visit. So it saved us three to five visits for the RPE, one to three visits for the erupting upper twos. And overall, our case is progressing the way that we would expect it to with much, much fewer visits. So case two, motion and phase one braces. So for those of you guys looking for some info on the motion, this is where we're going to go into it. So this young guy, you can see his, his, uh, his teeth, um, very much lost space on the upper right lateral incisor area. On the upper, um, uh, upper right side, it's more than the upper left, but both sides have it. So we plan to, with goals, to monitor with the motion the right and left canine to class one. And you can put in molar right and left canine if desired. And then the two by four, again, it's passive barbed wire and that space closure. We talked a little bit about this with the RPE, but it's the same thing. So I used to, I go two weeks in a bear and I call that my training wheel rubber band, getting them used to wearing it. And then I'd go four weeks in Ram, four weeks in Impala. And those are Ormco bands and, um, well, and Impala also correlates to force one. And so we used to bring them in each time, see if they're ready and switch them to these bands. We don't do that anymore. What we do is we give them all of the bands, still writing on the packaging to tell them what the interval should be, go through all the bands, give them all the bands. And then my DMC coordinator is viewing us every two weeks and checking the progress. We use some quick responses that go along with it. And then we plan to bond. So let's go through each of these. And so we set the canine, as you see here, again, we said we hope to get to three months be done with full time rubber band wear with our motion cases. So that's why our goal is set at 12 weeks. Now, as a pro tip for clinically on all my motion cases, I put on bilateral motion, even if it's a unilateral case, because most time class two cases are are actually bilateral, just like a posterior crossbite is bilateral most of the time. And so to save me from having problems, I'll wear both sides and we vary the rubber band strengths. And then the other thing is, that's a pro tip for monitoring, um, molar tracking in phase one cases is more difficult just because of the size of the patient and getting them to use the retractor to get it all the way to the lateral sides. So I don't find the molar goal to be that efficient in tracking phase one. So we don't even include it in our phase one tracking. So it's less notifications to your dam coordinator over time. So as you see in this case, where um, the left side is the side that's really closer to class one, it doesn't need as much. It needs, still needs a little bit of spacing. And so we're selecting the goal as we talked about. Well, here's the quick responses that we developed. So we send the first message and it's talking about the existing band that they're in sending it either the day that they're there or the next day. And we'll talk about that um, scheduling responses in a minute. But this is set up so that we send it the same day or next day. So it's a reminder, even though they walked out with everything, we went over all the instructions, they can always go back and look at this in their quick notes. And so in this case, you can see the left side is good. Right side is still progressing, maybe not progressing as fast as we want to. So what we say to them is we don't we don't go negative. What we say is, OK, things are looking good, great or good. What size bands are you in and how would you score yourself? And this is how we keep up with the patients. And we see that there's not a lot of progress. Then we know if they tell us that there are seven, which we hear a lot of sevens, it's probably not really the case. So we can send some messages to reinforce where we're where talk to them about the fact that it'll drag things on if they're not doing it that way. And so. If we do that, then you send each of your two, you have phase one, two message, phase one, three message, tell them to go through each of the bands at that right interval. And so we're using a couple of different guide points to tell us when is it time to switch. The first time that we send them the message, they just got them. The second message that we send 
is a we have them switch every time at two weeks, whether they're progressing or not from that training wheel band. But we're waiting on the third band to say, are they wearing it? And so if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you will see that it's showing you that on the left side, the goal is already should be already um, if you were doing both sides, the goal would tell you that it's already class one. But you can also see the visual cue that on the right side that it's still class two. And we can see that end on nature to this. So in this case, if it's progressing but going slowly, we'll probably switch to that next band and send that third message to them. But in this case, with being asymmetric, what I decided to do is send them a little message about, let's go left side nighttime only and right side full time. So this is a quick, easy way to send the message. You can remind them with which bands they should be in if you want to in your message. And so this just helps them to get the side that we want to correct more on, but a quick message without bringing them in. And so in this case, even though the tongue is covering it, you can see now that it's showing that we're actually corrected, maybe even slightly overcorrected. You can see in the molar a little bit, all without seeing them in the office. And you can look at the space that we're developing with the motion too. So the motion isn't just about bike correction. It's also about space regaining. And so then we transition to brackets. And again, this is no different than we talked about with the RPE case. And you just set that to your passive arch wire, let it go, and see them later. So this case, seven months so far in treatment, three total visits, two visits to get the motion started because we have to scan them for the lower Essex, lower lingual arch, whatever you're going to uh, deliver. First visit is bond, um, is bond the upper brackets because we're not scheduling them until they're ready to bond. Unless we see a problem, need to bring them in. And in those cases, we'll bring them in and give them the, we need mom here, talk over everything with them. But the next visit is wait, we're waiting for is arch change and coils. Again, it saves us all this time. But the pro tip is for scheduling here, and that is reduce the number of visits that you need, taking the burden off of your staff to see all these quick visits in your office for scheduling, for parents coming in, all of that stuff. You don't need to do that. Third case. So this is a full treatment case. So an adolescent case with motion. And, and I say phase one braces. I made a mistake there. So this is full braces. So this young lady, you can see the retronathic mandible and the flaring of the upper teeth, but you can also see that blocked out canine. So in this case, Again, we're setting the goals for the motion first, and that will be canine right and left, molar right and left if you desire. I don't always set the molar. Actually, for right now, we're not setting the molar unless we're not seeing the movement on the canine. And then once you get into the full braces, the passive arch wire, and then the overbite set in this. And I'm, we get the question a lot about the motion and overbite, and I mean, sorry, motion and overjet. I'm gonna discuss that in just a second. And then once you get to your elastics, with your full braces, we do set the overjet component and then canines again, right and left. So the old, we already talked about this. This is no different than the way we did it with phase one. It's just different band structure. We go bare, force one, force two, and we do the same thing. So we give them all the bands, DMC coordinators checking them every two weeks, quick responses times three, but this is the scheduling of the quick responses. We now do this with phase one and full treatment cases, and I'm going to show you that in just a second where to do that. And so um, when you're looking at this case, you see the high canine. So the pro tip here from a clinical perspective is don't be afraid to bond to the high canine with the motion. It's a great extruder, extruder and vertical controller for you. And then um, setting your goals with the end in mind. Remember, always set the canines. You don't always set the molars when you're because of scanning digitally on the lateral sides. And then we set our goal again to that same interval, that three month interval is what we're hoping to get to. So in this case, we've set it, we got the 12 weeks left, we let them go with the bracket, I mean with the bands. Here's where we talk about the overjet. So with a motion appliance, with many of your bike correctors, it doesn't have to be motion. When you apply these, you can apply it to your twin force, your forces, um, your pendulum, whatever you want to do. Most of these would correlate with that as well. But overjet is not going to be solved in most of your um, 
early bite correction cases. And that's because flaring of your upper incisors, sometimes you're just regaining space. You're not really changing the overjet. And so the overjet isn't going to change until you put something in place to start changing that upper interior. So I don't find this overjet goal to be that efficient. So here's where we get into the quick responses. So to get to the chat feature, you can see that there's a multitude of ways to get to it. You can use the little chat toggle. You can use the little sidebar. And that brings down these in your quick responses. But on the bottom right under the chat, you see use a quick reply. That's how you get to these quick replies to then post directly to the chat. And this is if you're your DM coordinator, you're a DM coordinator now, you just post these as you're looking at cases and chatting. But there's a better way with, with things like these messages to send this on an automated basis, especially the first two messages. So now what we've done as a staff, and we just decided this recently, is that we're gonna send the first message, which is this one, we're gonna send it the day after the visit. And that way they get used to, um, they, they, they've had a day to process, and then this is the reminder to know what they're going to wear. And then here's where you can set that automation. On the top right of your patient screen, you see new action. And right under new action, send a message to patient. And then here, you can use your quick replies as you see the pull down menu. It posts it, you set the date and the time, hit okay, and it will set it up. So our first message is sent the next day. And our second message, again, we're having them change motion band from the bare rubber band to the next size rubber band in two weeks. So we're automating this to send at two weeks without anybody having to do it. So Dr. if you look at this case, look at the canine, now it's starting to come down and move into place even further down. But again, let these be visual, visual cues below. You see the class three on the left-hand side, that's perfect. I'm a big proponent of overcorrection and bite correction. And so we would like to see a class three or a super class one relationship, but you can see on the right that it's not, it's still more class one. So we're gonna vary our elastics here. And so there's the third message. You may want just wanna send it out, let them keep going a little bit longer. But if you do wanna change it, we've made quick responses and you can see it on the bottom. And that is, we're gonna start in this case, right full and left at night. I did X's where we want to do the band so you can insert the band size and that way you got things moving and then you transition to brackets. And again, brackets in a full treatment case, brackets in a phase one case in early transition, there's no different. Passive arch wire is what you're looking to select. If you need some space, you're going to do some space closure with a power chain. You can do that. So no different in that respect in your early wire sequencing. So this is nine months total treatment time. Three visits thus far, two for the motion, the first to bond, and um, uh, and then what we do later is we remove the motion. because you saw in those cases, I have braces on the front and motion on the back. It's a whole different lecture. And then that saves us this extra time. So the pro tip on that communication is use your quick responses, but not just for your elastics. And we're starting to develop these. Miko's helping us. And so the, the staff has come up with them. Miko's making them. We're going to have one for hygiene for the RPE turning for retainer instructions so that we can automate these throughout their journey if each of these appliances or retention so that we don't have to do it ourselves. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is braces themselves. So we talked about the early stage with the arch wire change, but now I wanna talk about braces and, and things that you can use DM to their max floor with your brace cases, because I know a lot of people are just doing aligners. So the first thing is, that you have, this is one of the first errors. And I've got one case that's an aligner case we'll go quickly through in just a second. I made errors here and I didn't follow the protocols or didn't follow the goals to the T that I should have. So in this case, we overcorrected, but as we started to retract our upper interior using the motion, I didn't pay attention to the change between the left side of the screen, which is a three on the canine and the right side, which is a one. We lost a lot of our anchorage in what we were doing. So this doesn't just track your progress in the positive, it can help you from having problems in the negative. I should have noticed this and kept it going. If you look at the other side, we really messed up is we went from class one to end on, and in this case, even more end on lost time. So this is before I was using some of the automations. We weren't tracking it or having our staff track it at that two, four, six week interval. That's important to do. So we messed things up here. 
learn from this mistake. So let's show you this quick aligner case because it's super easy with aligners. This young lady refused to do braces, not the hardest thing to do, a little bit class two on each side. Again, the goals were set, but you only need to set them during the motion stage. So canines at class one and then molar if you want to. Again, the same thing with motion, no difference there. And same thing with the responses as you go through. So in this case, it was a class three tendency. And so we needed that crowding to have some space to unravel. So pro tip here is working together using simultaneous movement. I know Bruce is doing this. And that is, I've got active aligners working on the upper while I'm doing my motion on the lower. This works perfect with DM. You can track the aligners and the motion all at the same time, making sure that it's staying on progress. And then the other thing is, keep them the same. Don't make any changes. You might want to wear your elastics at nighttime when you're transitioning. And what I mean by that is, if we look at the timeline on the top of this, you'll see that the person was an eight for a long time. We were finishing the aligner movement and then we were holding it while we had the align the motion virtually removed to get through the treatment. So the only times you'd add other goals in these cases would be if you're near liners and you're trying to switch or you're trying to correct a deep bite or open bite, you probably want to use the, the normal overbite goal. And then if you are wearing some elastics, you might want to use overjet canines or molars in that relationship for goals as well. So here's my big pro tip with aligners in general. And most of you may have gone to this, some of you haven't, but I would encourage you, stop seeing them so often in your practice. You don't need to. You've already seen them at a regular interval, probably a, a shorter interval by your DM coordinator in, in dental monitoring with the, uh, with the photo monitoring. It's already there, you don't need to do it. So this is a, a case that's gone a lot longer than anticipated, but look how few visits I've seen her during the line interval. This girl is an accelerated program that's a combo of high school and college. Getting her out of class is very difficult. So this treatment, when I showed them this, talked to them about uh, DM and aligners, they were all in because you are saving them time, less school time, less time to see them for aligner visits, and then DM overall helps you to track this. So everything I'm going to show you with this, with the rest of the braces stuff that I was talking about, all are pro tips. And so the goals here are use your dynamic scheduling to its maximum. You're catching the issues like we talked about before. You have a built-in parent and social media marketing opportunity with a before and after video. So let's talk about each of these. So in your braces, we already talked about the initial wire and that's your level line rotate wires, right? Set your goal just the same you would do in your own office. And then finishing wires, you're gonna set the same. It's just tracking passive arch wire. That's all you're tracking. And then co coil springs and impacted teeth. If you read it, it says passive arch wires and auxiliary. So it's looking for your coil spring your activation of your impacted tooth to show no more movement. So again, using biology versus just norms or what your normal interval to see them in the office would be. And so here's the, the thing that I've noticed. It's an observation that I've got about a third of my patients that I've been doing this with that finish faster than the intended goal. In those cases, I can bring them in sooner and I'm going to finish them sooner than my estimated treatment time. About a third fall right in the middle of that number and about a third go longer. So in those longer cases, you probably would have bought them, brought them in and had to force a wire in to a place that you probably shouldn't have, maybe even causing some bracket uh, damage or breakdown. So follow the goals, make sure even if they're over your tracking to make sure that movement is still happening. Okay, how about vertical? So if you're using reverse curved wires, accentuated curved wires or vertical elastics, you're still gonna use the passive arch wire but you're also going to start putting in their normal overbite and that will help you track that movement vertically. So until it's in the right place to bring them in and remove the accentuated curve, reverse curve or change your elastics. How about AP? So you're just using elastics. You didn't get it all with your bite corrector or you're just using elastics in that case. So you're going to choose class two or class three elastics. You're going to go class one canine. 
You're going to do class one molar if you need to. And in these cases, when you're finishing these cases, go ahead and select your normal overjet. It's going to help you track it. Power chain for closing anterior space. Make sure you're using your anterior space closure goal. And then extraction, extraction or maximum anterior retraction because of spacing. Then use your closure of extraction spaces as well as normal overjet. All of these are helping you track the progress of your brace cases. How about the transverse? So say you're using midline elastics, asymmetric elastics, a class two on one side, a class three on the other side. Set your midline uh, deviation uh, goal in these cases. And then with your cross bite elastics, constriction or expansion wires, you might want to set the cross bite um, correction goal unless there's no cross bite. So many of my phase one cases don't truly have a cross bite. Some do, some don't. So this is the part where we're talking about quickly about DM catching problems. So this kid refused to tell his mom about, if you look at the top right photo, what you're going to see is no door on the brace. If you look at the bottom, it says bracket still damaged, upper right one, upper left one. This kid had fallen off his bike. He went face first, but he didn't want to tell his mom. And we noticed it in this to say, hey, it looks like he had some sort of accident. And that's how we reported it to the parrot. He found out. Luckily, the kid didn't have any tooth damage, but we did notice the bracket damage. On the lower uh, photo, you can see the lower left six is off, as it states in the observation below. And then in the one on the top right, you see the lower right two bracket off. If left, especially the lower right two, that tooth is going to continue to get behind and maybe not allow you to switch wires at the next visit. So handling these issues on time. Um, can you spot the issues in this? So if you look at the bottom left, there's an issue with the five. If you look at the bottom right, there's an issue with the lower right four. And if the upper, you'll notice a difference in the bite ramps. And if you look, this is what we got from DM. It listed all of those things without us noticing, especially the wire out of the lower right four, kind of hard to see or view in this way. So we were able to bring this person in and fix all of these at once. And then hygiene and pathology. Look at the tartar on the lower right. I mean, on the upper left photo, on the upper right photo, same patient with all the plaque on the teeth. And then in the case of the lower middle one, you can see the aptus ulcer. They had sent a message in that said they were having toothaches on that side. But when we looked at the DM, it showed that aptus ulcer and that's the treatment that we went along with. So um, to, this is where I think the DM is the most underrated, and that is with oral hygiene. This is not just helping them keep that on track. It's also a CYA for you, and it's part of their permanent record showing that you've discussed it with parent when the parent says, nobody told me. And we all hear that all the time. And then this kind of thing is something that I noticed with my own daughter. So the top picture is my daughter. And you see that lateral incisor leaning because I originally engaged this tooth just like you see the lower. So I was worried with this young man that's on the bottom that his case was going to be the same. And so this helped us follow it more closely. I set this interval for me to see this every two weeks for a while to make sure that it didn't develop the same problem on the top and it didn't on the bottom. So we were able to follow that and monitor. And then the last thing is the before and after video. And this thing is huge. So parents love this. I've heard of so many parents showing their friends, posting it on social media. Hopefully in the future, we'll have a button that we can say, will you allow this to post it on social media? Because when you look at the visual change for these parents, for these kids, the parents absolutely love this. And I don't even know if you guys know about that feature, but it's super helpful, not just for, for them to see the movement, but also for you marketing your practice. So here's my action plan for you guys. And I'll be done. We can ask, answer some questions. I'm going about five minutes over. Um, set your goal intervals and use your whole treatment staff to help you set that. And, and that should be based off of what you've done in the past. Don't make any changes to what you've done in the past. Develop a great list of quick replies. And again, use all of the people in your staff to help you come up with the right ways to say it and automate them when you can. Get your staff involved with any with anything and everything because they're going to be the ones that are going to be setting the goals when they come in for each visit. Empower your DMC. And this has been a progress for Miko and I. Miko came in with zero ortho experience. 
Um, and so we were able to use DM to train her. And now I'm at the point where I've lessened my burden, made it so much easier on myself because she knows what to look for. And she knows that if she's not sure, send me a message. We'll take a look at it together. Um, if, if you're not already um, monitoring all your brace cases or appliance cases, I highly encourage you to go all in. It's not just for aligners. This will help you stay on track. It will help keep track of all the patients. And it is so powerful in what it can do for you. And then the dynamic scheduling, I know it seems scary. My staff was like, I don't, what are we going to do? And, and it has been nothing but a positive in our practice. And the last thing is we're having fun again. It's made our day lighter. We, we can bring people in. We can pop it up on the screen and look at how much progress you've made. We can go positive. And if we need to, we can pull up and annotate a photo to say, okay, here's the negatives, but let's get better there. So this has just made things so much easier, so much more fun, something that I never anticipated that it would do for my practice. I heard it at the summit, but didn't expect it. So that's actually all I got. So questions, I think Sean probably has those ready for me. Absolutely. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we got you. Uh, so before we dive into uh, a, the list of questions that have been submitted, so thank you to those of you who have done that. Uh, allow me to point out the QR code you see in front of you. And this is for your feedback, which is so important, so greatly appreciated. This code will be will direct you to a very brief participant survey so we can continue to make these DM Connect webinars as valuable as possible for you. Um, so with that, uh, there have been uh, some some questions that have come in. So I'll start with this one uh, from Alex. Very good presentation. Very helpful. Uh, that's not actually the question. It is, I've been starting to use these treatment questions as well, or treatment goals as well, but I didn't realize how much more potential existed. What would you say is the most important thing to develop as a full staff to get these goals going? Yeah, so number one is is that using your existing that you know eight to ten week interval for your for your small wires, your whatever your interval would be to see them. Just stick with those because that's a comfort spot for your staff, right? They're used to seeing a patient back for that R to R change for whatever at that interval. So that's a number one. Number two are these quick responses, and and the and the reason I think that those are so important. Um, in, in this whole process, you can't separate them, is that when you're going to see a notification that's based off of your goals, you want to have positive reinforcement and education to help keep them intact and keep things going the right way or help them to get back on the right path. And then the last thing, which no one told me, and luckily Holly was great about helping us do this, and that is setting the interval through your task assignments and that can be done through your protocols as well. Get your DM trainer to help you with this, that you want somebody to see them physically. And especially like that RPE case that I was telling you, what if the expansion screw is not turning? If you just wait to the end of your goal to see it, that's not going to help you. So have your interval set, whatever you're comfortable with, with your DMC to let them handle it and take some of that off your plate. Hopefully that's helpful. Absolutely. Uh the next one was from uh, Thomas, and this was posted as you were showing, I believe, case two, maybe case three. Um, and it certainly pertains to the, the images of the scans that we were seeing. But we, we have, Thomas says, we have difficulties getting people to always scan and CR. What tips do you have? Oh, that's a great one. So, um, and I didn't put it in here, but we actually, and, and I know that DM has videos on how to bite. Um, but I thought it was much more powerful to come from my office. So what we have now is a video um, that's on our YouTube channel. And it's my staff member with the exact tube showing them how to bite exactly and, and going through that. So now we have a quick response with the YouTube video link that sends them straight to that bite video. If they don't respond to the bite video, we typically will bring them in. Um, for a quick visit, like a five to 10 minute visit, and just show them the quick bite. If we see that things are progressing, even though you can't tell exactly, but you're starting to see anterior spacing, I'll wait until their next visit and reinforce how the bite should be. In the future, and I've already suggested this, and, and I know the DM people are talking about it, 
we will have a library that you'll be able to store videos and photos that will be good education tools that you can pop directly into your chat. But for now, it's just copy the link, paste it into your quick replies. That's the best way that we've gone about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I do hear this a lot because, of course, we are depending on the quality of scan uh, that the patient is taking. Uh, yep. It, of course, goes back to how well are we teaching them and setting the right expectation and whatnot. But uh, the question is uh, from Isaac, how, how are you accurately assessing if a patient is actually in class one when setting your goals for class one? Those buccal occlusion photos from the scans are not always clear not not at the exactly the right angle to make an accurate assessment yeah so two things that go along with that number one you're probably not looking at every one of your scans in your timeline but you can go back one and take a look at what the bite looked like then if the one bite that you get because you get different bites each time so if you mm -hmm. go back one scan in your timeline and take a look at it you can have a good representation of where things are. And then with motion, it's easy because motion, you should see unraveling of the anterior, spacing of the anterior, that you can also track via your photos, not just the bite relationship on the canine. And that's why I say the molar is so tough on the phase ones. Um, when in doubt, send them the bite video that we just talked about. And then the other thing you can do is Definitely have them come in for a quick visit. Again, you still have, even if you do a quick visit, you still have fewer visits overall to make this work, to come in and say, okay, we need to make sure that you're biting the right way so we can track this. Um, I've even done this with a kid um, on Zoom or on, uh, it was actually a Google Meet, um, where we had them bite on the screen and turn their head. And I said, that's the way to bite. Or, nope, you're not in the right place. Take your tongue to the roof of your mouth bite down, that's where you should be. And it is different with the tube in place. So sometimes um, on that case, I had him put the tube in and then bite so we could understand the feeling with the tube in place. But you're right, it does get tough. And, but it's a, it's a rare, it's not rare. It's a lot fewer than you think that you can't see the bite relationship over time. If you looked at some of those photos I showed, some of them were biting great and some were not. And those were all from the same patient. So that's why I'd say go back one or two scans and look at those that should help you oh yeah and, and frankly i i know there are it can be easily forgotten that you can go back and right now you are locked in on the the picture on the right to the current stage but the one on the left you can go back to any point in time and and that, that is easy it is easy to forget that you have that capability and when you're in something like an rpe and a motion and nothing else you can also tell, tell when the transition is in that timeline to know where you want to go back because there's nothing, there's no dot in the top line for braces when there's no braces in place. So that's uh -huh. an easy way to, too, to go back and know, okay, well, this is where I start, finish my motion and start in my braces because that's in the timeline. Absolutely. I, I always say that anonymous always submits the great, great questions. And this is no exception <laughs> um, with, with, goals for braces when they do come in for a new arch wire do you reset all the goals and do you start a uh, week number over or just add to the weeks yeah so um that's a great question i may have i may have kind of glazed over it as we went through it because we we're trying to get done um yes yeah, so every time they come into the office the you reset the goal even mm -hmm. if it's to me even if it's an emergency visit um, have it up and be ready to set the goal because sometimes when they come in for an emergency visit, it ends up being their regular visit. And we, we're really good about this is that we look and say, okay, you came in for a broken bracket. You're two weeks away from your regular visit. Let's go out and talk to mom and do that visit. So we have our, our thing is when they pull up the patient chart, they pull up DM chart at the same time. They're always up. And every visit we go look and make sure the goals have been reset before if it's an emergency and we're still keeping the same visit, but if they're not, if it's a regular visit or we did their regular visit that day, you reset it. So every time you see them in the office, have it up and be ready to reset. But if you change an arch wire, reset it every time. And wow. the top number again, is just how long before they get notifications. So we tend to leave that at one or two. I like two probably better, 
but the bottom number is your goal. That's the one you need to reset. And that's the one to stay on your normal amount of time that you would do for that type of arch wire. Uh -huh. So as an example, if you initially set a goal for 12 weeks and five weeks later, maybe, as you mentioned, maybe there's an emergency visit, you come in, you may not even be relating to the goal that you set, but you would kind of reassess and say, okay, let's just reset that to now seven weeks. Is that, am I on track with what you would do there? So not really. So it, if it's, if we're keeping the same uh, treatment plan and all we're doing is fixing the emergency, we just leave it as is, as is. you don't okay. need to change it. Um, you only change it if you end up doing something more than you anticipated. So say the arch wire was out or broken in a case um, when you brought them in for emergency and you know when you put that bracket back on, that arch wire is going to take longer to go passive, reset that one. If you go ahead and do their visit that was scheduled for two weeks later, reset it. But if you didn't do the visit and you didn't make wholesale change other than just fix the, the broken bracket, leave it as is. There's no need to because you're still on track with your same timeline. Uh -huh. Got it. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, David doesn't post a question. David just simply says, incredible presentation. Thank you and congrats. Wow. Triple exclamation point. That means mm. you really um, And then Seanica, uh, uh posted first uh, great talk. Thanks. But her question is, uh, so are you 100% dynamic scheduling? 100%. Yeah. Unless... And, and you guys are going to have this too, right? Um, the mom that says doesn't have time for anything. I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to scan here in the office. I don't have time. We, we, don't, we don't have time for that. I, at home, I don't have time to tell them to, to scan. And my first thing is always to tell them it's their responsibility. Make them scan, right? But you're going to have that parent that just won't make their kid do anything. And so in those cases, we just don't even have them do, do DM. Um, we leave them and give them the app. We try and get them to scan it the first time because DM, we tell them it's not just the photos. It's a communication tool. And so if you need to communicate with us, you can snap a photo, send it to us. So even in those cases that aren't cooperating or aren't doing it, we still keep them in DM, but we just don't press the point on those parents. We'll take them out of monitoring and just leave it as a communication tool. Uh -huh. Did that answer the question? Because I may have missed it a little bit. I, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Uh, if, if you wouldn't mind to go to the uh, next slide on the presentation. Uh, there we go. So uh, first of all, on behalf of uh, Tracy McFarland, our director of training and education, thank you uh, so much, Dr. Reagan, for putting your spotlight on these DM treatment goals and for sharing your tips and the, the process for successful utilization. So want to get my that pleasure. Up. It's been my pleasure. A lot of fun. Oh yeah, you you've given everyone's so much valuable inf information and insight to think about. That here's what we're going to do tomorrow night. I hereby authorize everyone to turn your clocks back one hour, uh, so you can just replay this presentation in preparation for Monday morning. Wow, what <laughs> such a giver! He's a giver. It happens to align with daylight saving time. Many of you is going to be turning your clocks back anyway, but you can't blame a guy for trying. So, uh, and thank you to everyone who uh, tuned in live today. We challenge you, if if you're not doing so already, to start utilizing the treatment goals as you've seen presented today, even if you're starting with just a couple of the basics, the passive arch wire, the, the class one canine correction, gradually move up to utilizing more and more of those goals but just so you can see how the communication happens, how the, the timeline that you set uh, re responds biologically, uh, what you see in the mouth. And I think you're going to see a lot of those are going to line up uh, very well. Um, we want these to help you, help your practice, and help your patients all benefit uh, from what these treatment goals can provide. On this slide, we, we referenced uh, essentially the domino effect uh, of monitoring braces treatments and utilizing treatment goals that can unlock the potential for that dynamic scheduling in September. Uh, if, if you were on that webinar, if not, it's still available, but Dr. Jason Battle presented on the topic of 
dynamic scheduling from a new user perspective. Uh, on December 15th, as you can see, Dr. Barry Benton will dive into the concept of dynamic scheduling and the transition he made as more of an advanced user, uh, just deeper into his journey, made that transition. Uh, we do hope you will tune in for that presentation and this QR code will take you directly to that registration page. Uh, and if you can go to the laptop slide, because this is of course the other alternative, if you didn't catch that QR code, dentalmonitoring.com slash events, uh, you will see uh, the link to register for the December 15th presentation as well. But uh, thank you again to everyone. Until next time, uh, have a blessed remainder of your day. Be kind to one another and everyone be well.